Hello and welcome to this tutorial on Twin Motion Shortcuts. In this tutorial, we will cover helpful keyboard shortcuts to make your Twin Motion scene building smooth and seamless. So let's get started. To find all Twin Motion shortcuts, navigate to Help Shortcuts and choose your language of choice. In this tutorial, we will focus on the keyboard shortcuts. These shortcuts are dependent on the type of keyboard you have. Today, I'll be using an English keyboard for Windows computers. By the end of this tutorial, you will be well informed on keyboard shortcuts, including function keys, number keys, letter keys, and navigation shortcuts that will speed up your interactions in Twinmotion. Let's get started at the top of the keyboard. The first keyboard tip we have for you is to use F1. This is not listed in the keyboard shortcut, but will be a very helpful tool for curious Twinmotion users. When working in Twinmotion, if you are ever unsure about what an icon does, you can simply hover over the icon to learn more. Many times there will be a YouTube video that further explains the function. When you see the YouTube logo with F1, you can hit the F1 key and it will pull up the associated video. Now we have the key F2. Similar to many other programs, this is a renaming shortcut. In the Properties panel, you can select the asset and hit F2 to rename the asset. Next up is F11, which will make Twinmotion full screen, giving you a little more real estate to work with. F12 goes into presentation mode, which makes the viewport full screen. Next, we have the numbers one through six, which correspond to the different speeds set up in Twinmotion. To view these, you can select the eye icon on the top right corner, go down to the second icon, and you'll see the descriptions for each speed, with one being the slowest and best for fine tuning camera adjustments, to six, which is excellent for large projects. You can select these icons here, or simply hit numbers one through six to quickly filter through speeds while navigating in your twin motion model. Next, we have numbers seven, eight, and nine, which correspond to the different gizmo options, translate, rotate, and scale. These can be seen at the top of the screen. If I select an asset and hit seven, eight, and nine, you'll see Twinmotion filtering through the different gizmos. You can also cycle through these by hitting the tab key on your keyboard. Now let's move on to the letters. Similar to many other programs, WASD represents shortcuts for navigating the scene if you do not want to use a mouse. W is to move forward, A is for left, S is for backward, and D is for right. Don't forget that when using these, keys one through six can control the speed at which you move through the scene. The Q and E keys are your shortcuts for moving the elevation up and down. Q goes up and D goes down. The R key will allow you to switch between the raster and path tracer render modes if your computer has path tracing capabilities. Hitting the Y key brings up the menu of viewport options for easy access. Now hitting T on the keyboard will toggle the material picker, which will pull up the material for an object in the scene when clicked with a material picker. Next is O, which filters through the orthogonal views of the scene. This can be very helpful during the scene building process, allowing you to quickly switch views to fine tune placing objects in twin motion. In combination with the switching of orthographic views, you can use F on your keyboard, which will zoom the viewport to the asset you have selected. Now, the next keyboard shortcut enables and disables game mode, which turns the icons in the viewport on and off. So when you hit G, you can see those icons disappear if you want a clean viewport, or up here if you want to easily click on assets in the scenes such as decals and lights. Then we have H. This will hide and unhide any assets you have selected. This is turning off the visibility in the scene graph, so you always have the option to change the visibility manually in the scene graph as well. Now we've got the Z key shortcut which toggles the local and world axis, meaning it switches between the local coordinate system of a specific asset and the coordinate system of the project when editing and manipulating selected assets. This can be very helpful when placing and editing decals. You'll see here, when I hit Z on the keyboard, the gizmo is slightly changing, taking on the world axis versus the local axis. You can see the changes at the top of the screen here as well. 
And last but not least from the letters, we have M, which toggles between pedestrian and drone mode, changing the way one moves throughout the space. Pedestrian mode snaps the viewport to eye height for an optimal walking experience, while the drone allows you to move freely through the scene. You can also change this setting by selecting the eye icon on the top right corner and selecting the fourth icon. Now, some additional shortcuts on the keyboard include the arrow keys, which allow you to move left, forward, backward, and right. Now we will take a moment to talk about some of the most used shortcuts for quick scene building, which include the shift button. The first is the duplicate feature, which can be done by pressing the shift button while you transform the object. Whether you move, hold down shift and rotate, and hold down shift while you scale. You also have the placement shortcut, which allows you to move a selected asset to the place you click on in the scene. You can do this by holding down the shift button and clicking anywhere in the scene. Now this wraps up our twin motion tutorial on keyboard shortcuts. Feel free to review our keyboard documentation. Thank you for joining.